In this video, we will generate a schedule where teams play more than a single round robin, but less than a double round robin. We will also consider some additional rules that might apply to real world scheduling problems, such as team availabilities, opponent spacing, and home away balance for various weekdays. Let's consider a scenario where we have eight teams. These teams will play a total of 12 games throughout the season on Thursdays and Saturdays. As you might have noticed, an eight team competition will complete a round robin cycle in seven games. So we have enough game dates for a single round robin, but not enough game dates for a double round robin. This means that all teams will play some opponents once and other opponents twice. Let's also assume that we want to apply some other common scheduling rules. For example, if teams play twice, they must play once home and once away. If teams play twice, then we want to make sure those two games are spaced apart throughout the season. Let's also pretend that all teams prefer Saturday home games instead of Thursday. So make sure that each team receives a similar number of home Saturday games. Brookline must play away games in the second and third game dates due to venue availability issues. Finally, we will also explore one more concept where two scheduling rules are incompatible with each other. First off, let's create a new scheduling task. Let's add our teams in and specify our game dates using the calendar view. Okay, let's now define our tournament type. Schedule it provides several tournament structures depending on the flexibility you require. In this case, we want the teams to play 12 games, which is not enough for a full double round robin. So we can select the games per team option and set the value to 12 games per team. Games per team allows us to configure competitions that are defined by the number of games as opposed to the number of round robin cycles. Let's continue to the rules section. It usually helps to start with the easy rules and we can add complexity as we go. So we will start with home away balance. Simply add the rule into our scheduling task by selecting the plus icon. In this scenario, we want each team to receive the same number of home and away games. So we want the difference between the number of home and away games to be less than or equal to one. But remember, we also want teams to receive an equal as possible number of home games on Saturdays as well. Home away balance rule can be used for this scenario as well. Let's add another instance of this rule. But this time, we want to make this rule specific to Saturdays only. So we will select the on particular weekdays option and select Saturday. Before we add too much complexity to the scheduling task, let's run this schedule to see what it looks like. It is often helpful to gradually add rules instead of adding in all rules together so we can be sure that we haven't made any mistakes. As we can see, each team have perfect home away balance where each team plays six home and six away games. We can also see that the Saturday home games are balanced as well with each team receiving three homes and three aways on Saturdays. So far, so good, but the schedule has other issues that we need to resolve. Let's head back to the rules section and add in other standard rules. We want to avoid teams playing more than three away games or home games in a row. This rule is called home away repeated. Let's add in this rule for both homes and aways. Now, since we have a tournament where some teams will play opponents twice, we usually want to make sure that they should play that same opponent once home and once away. In ScheduleUpt, we call this pair home away balance. Let's add that rule in. We will set the value of this rule to one because for matchups that occur only once, the difference cannot be zero. Let's rerun the schedule and see how it looks. Okay, we're getting closer, but we also want to make sure that if teams play an opponent twice, that those two games are spaced apart throughout the season. 
This can be handled using the repeat opponent spacing rule. In an eight-team competition, it might be sensible to make sure teams play an opponent for the second time at least six games after the first one. So let's add that rule in and specify that teams cannot play each other again for at least six date numbers. Let's rerun one more time to make sure the new rule is compatible with our existing rules. It looks like our repeat opponent spacing rule has worked. Now let's head back to add in our final rule, Brookline must be away in games two and three because their home venue is unavailable on these dates. Schedulept has a rule called Team Availabilities, which allows us to make sure teams avoid playing home or away, or both, on certain dates. Let's go ahead and add that rule in. In our example, let's specify that Brookline cannot play home in games two and three. We can do that by selecting the relevant dropdown values. As we can see, Brookline is now scheduled to play away games on the second and third game dates, just as we needed. Finally, let's see what happens when we try to run a schedule where two rules are in direct conflict with each other. This can often happen when competition managers are faced with many scheduling rules and requests. One such example could be that, on one hand, we want to make sure Brookline is away in game two, but on the other hand, another team, safe Fairhope, want to play an away game against Brookline in game two. It is clear that we cannot have these two rules because Brookline cannot be both home and away in game two. Let's see what happens when we try. As we can see, Schedulept has identified a conflict and no solution is possible. While this is a very simple example of a scheduling conflict, it can be very common to have hidden or more indirect conflicts that may exist amongst your scheduling rules. To resolve, we will need to make a choice on which rule takes precedence and either switch off or delete the rule that is less important. This scenario also highlights the importance of adding rules and complexity gradually as you familiarize yourself with any potential conflicts that may exist. In other videos, we will explore more advanced tournament types and customizable rules using the powerful advanced game count rule. Thanks for watching.